interview with Dr. Wilson. That was a fascinating clip dealing with the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. But on the line right now, we have with us one of our Grandmaster Scholar Warriors. Uh, I've had her on the African History Network show twice before. It's always a pleasure to have her on, to be in the presence, to talk to her. I'm talking about none other than the one and only Dr. Francis Cress Wilson. Hotel, my sister. How are you doing tonight? Good evening. How are you? Mm-hmm. I'm fantastic, sister. And uh, I was just at, right before the show. I was just at a planning meeting for African Liberation Day, so everybody is excited about you coming to Detroit. Excited to to hear from you, and uh, you know it's always uh, you know always a pleasure uh, to talk to you and to be in your presence. So I'm I'm fantastic. Very <laughs> good. Very good. Definitely, sister. Well, you know, there's a lot going on, and, you know, just when you think things have calmed down somewhat, they, <laughs> something happens and, and things jump off. And, you know, tonight, um, I've already let the people know you're going to be here in uh, uh, about your lecture, and I'm going to give them some more details about that as we go further into the, the, the um, segment here tonight. But I really wanted to talk to you about, Donald Sterling scandal in a culture of white supremacy, and the and the reason why is because um, when when we hear people like say a Donald Sterling it doesn't have to be him specifically but just someone like that when we hear him say something ignorant or what have you we some people may write it off as this person just being a bigot or this person being a racist something like that but. Donald Sterling, in his um, the, the famous 10-minute uh, segment of the telephone conversation that he had with the Stiviano, he also talked about a culture, and he said this is the way the culture is. Basically, so I think this way because the culture. The culture. Yes. yes, 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 and 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 personally, the the silver lining of the cloud is I think he did us a big favor to admit that that culture exists and it affects the way people think. <laughs> well, you and I are on the same page yes. uh, because I I call it the Sterling Silver Siviano <laughs> Affair. <laughs> okay. Uh, and I say that I, I'm just so pleased that mm-hmm. it took place. And the way that I look at that is that it was a truth offering. Yes. Because, see, there's so much, in other words, the major dynamic in this area of the world is the denial of racism. Mm Mm-hmm, yes. Do, Do you see? And so the media denies it, white people deny it, Many black people deny that, you know, why do we have to talk about racism? Racism is not a problem anymore. And just like you said, it keeps popping up because truth crushed to earth will always rise because it is reality. Truth is reality. Reality is truth. And so these events keep coming up. In spite of all the effort, you know, it's like a big elephant under the rug, and no matter how many people try to crush and keep the elephant from stirring, Mm -hmm. the rug continues to rumple. And so I say this was a profound truth offering, a really profound truth offering, because it was a continuous statement of racism, white supremacy, at the same time the denial that this is what I am. Absolutely. You know, my central, all of my work is based on trying to understand racism, white supremacy, and as a psychiatric physician, help black people understand racism, white supremacy, because I say it's key to our mental health. Mm -hmm. This is the dynamic that is happening. This is why black people greet each other, say, hey, what's happening? What's happening? Because we don't understand what's going on. Do you see, why is it that we find ourselves always back in the same place? We thought we had achieved voting rights. 
and now we're circling around and talking about trying to get voting assured voting rights again. We thought we had achieved school integration. And what do we find ourselves? The children are being more poorly educated than ever in the history. Mm -hmm. Schools are closing. Do you see, every problem that we give a name to that we think we have solved, it comes back and hits us in the face because the problems are symptoms of the total system of racism and white supremacy. But that is consistently being denied. And so Donald Sterling, I'm sure he doesn't, you know, he doesn't know he made more than a multi-billion dollar offering to black people right. with his statements and the truth of what it is that he didn't know was spilling out of his mouth. Right. But there it is on record. And so you have the media, all the people, the white people in the media, you know, scuffling around and calling him a racist. But they themselves refuse to talk about racism. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so yeah. this was a gift. And so black people all over this area of the world and all over the world should start talking and consistently talk about, no matter how the court proceedings work out. Absolutely. The Sterling Silver Siviano Revelations. <laughs> I'm going to have to remember that. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. See, all and those you... S's are mm -hmm. important. It's like one can say the SS. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is, this is a wonderful offering, meaning that truth, even though you might find the truth uncomfortable, but truth is always a greater benefit than the denial or the pretense that something doesn't exist. If you can confront truth, and I say that truth, to be able to look at truth, is also a measure of self-respect. Yes. Do You see, no matter how difficult it is, the willingness to look at it means that you are achieving a higher level of respect or self. And I say self-respect is more powerful than a nuclear weapon. Mm. Mm. See, well, this, you know, is, this is also the missing ingredient. Okay. Because for a group of people, the people who structured the system of racism, white supremacy, local, national, global, mm -hmm. one of the critical things that was essential because that People who classify themselves as white are a tiny minority of the people on this planet. Right. Fewer than one-tenth. The vast majority of the people are black, brown, red, and yellow. And so when the people who classify themselves as white begin to come out of Europe and circumnavigate the planet, and they found that the majority of people were people of color. And when the men, white men had sexual relations with the women of color, they realized that all the children looked like their mothers, that white could be genetically annihilated, even though they didn't talk in genetic terms, but they could see that white disappears. And so their whole effort for the past 500 years has been the effort for white genetic survival even though they can call it by different names. They can call it imperialism. They can call it capitalism. They can call it colonialism. They can give different names to it. Right. But bottom line, it is a total system, and this is what Neely Fuller has helped us understand from the time he laid out that racism is white supremacy. There's no other racism. There could be people of color with attitudes, but racism is a power structure and a power dynamic that operates in economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war. Mm -hmm. And so from the time they recognized 
that they were a tiny minority that could disappear, genetically disappear, in the sea of the global non-white majority. They have this system in operation, and essential to the operation was the destruction of the self-respect for people of color and of black people in particular because black has the greatest genetic potential to cause white genetic annihilation. And so that's why all people of color learn. If you're black, get back, brown, stick around, yellow, mellow, white, right. That's the color code for white genetic survival. And so, you know, people think, oh, no, that just, you know, they just think that it's the darker color. It's not just the darker color. The darker color has the most powerful genetic potential to cause white genetic annihilation, and it's all the same pigment, but the people who have the greatest genetic potential to produce the highest quantity, and they appear as the darkest people. They are the people that are most feared and therefore they want to put most color behind everything else. And see, the sterling, the, uh, what, the sterling, silver, Siviano affair brought out yeah. so much of this. Yes. It brought out a man who classifies himself as white talking about being jealous of black men. Yes. It yes. brought out um, V. Siviano talking, you know, or was uh, Sterling talking about how she hated her color and she wanted to be white and that she used bleaching cream mm -hmm. and that of all of her siblings, they were all Hispanic, but she was Hispanic and black. Yes. Now, all of this came out of this man's mouth including bringing in people into the locker room of the Clippers mm -hmm. when the black men would be half-dressed. And he would tell strangers, you know, just almost like a slave market, look at their beautiful bodies. Right, right. So I all that. of this offering, I say it's a cosmic offering. <laughs> All of this came out in the presence of black people and people who classify themselves as white. Not all black people, of course, but large numbers. See, I would dare say the majority of our group, black people, would prefer to not talk about racism. Correct. And this, and see, tragically, because we don't want to talk about the real cause, because, and this is why when black people would talk about racism in the, on the TV or something, and the white people would start jumping up and down talking about you're playing the race car. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Donald Sterling laid out the whole race deck. Yes, he did. <laughs> and Mark Garagos, who was on CNN, you know, he's one of their legal analysts. Mark mm -hmm. Garagos says he hears people talking like Donald Sterling every day and all the time. Mm. So, you yeah. see, if, if we were really wise... Black people would get all the tapes, all the transcripts, and sit down in study groups and dare anyone to deny that racism, white supremacy, is the dominant system on the planet. See, even the word America, A-M-E-R-I-C-A, contains the phrase, I am race. <laughs> right. See, just like the word Jesus in Ebonics is just us. Yeah, I played that clip before you came on. Too. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you, yes, you, see, you're so correct. Truth, see, truth, all, everything is energy. 
Mm-hmm. And so if we begin to understand everything is energy, and this is why it cannot be destroyed and why truth will always become evident. And it will just keep pushing and pushing and pushing. Absolutely. The energy forces will keep pushing and pushing until people come to terms with reality. And when I was trained in psychiatry over 40 years ago, they used to tell us, see, now psychiatry doesn't want to talk about reality because then it would have to talk about racism, white supremacy. Hmm. And so the, the dominant people in the field are people who classify themselves as white. They don't want to talk about white behavior. So they are now pushing uh, pharmacological psychiatry. In other words, any complaint, just take a pill. Certainly don't decode the system of racism, white supremacy, because you might really get well, and then the system will be in difficulty. But we were trained that, years ago, that the role of the psychiatrist is to help people face reality even when they are afraid to do so. Mm. And so we must keep trying to find the courage and the self-respect. See, people talk about spirituality. In my view, see, there is a creative force in the universe, and you can call it God, you can call it whatever you want to call it, that is responsible for making this grand and glorious universe that has some problematic people. And I say that the creative force made black people the mothers and fathers of everybody on the planet. White people couldn't produce all the colors. Black people can produce all of the colors, starting with crystal black, highest level of black. Then next you make a mutation to albinism, and that's what white people are. They're a mutation, a genetic deficiency state. But you combine those two together, and you get all the colors in the middle. Right. So the creative force made black people the mothers and fathers of everybody on the planet. But under white supremacy, black people have been taught to hate black, which, as I said, came out in V. Siviano's, uh, you know, about her that Donald Sterling talked about, about how she wanted to be white. Although she did have the courage to say, I'm black and Hispanic. Right. You see, so how could you be hating black people? How can you say these things, right? Absolutely. So she had the courage to, you know, to me she gets an A+. plus. Absolutely. Because her discussion was completely and totally relevant to the mm-hmm. reality of racism, whether she recognized it or not. So Absolutely. This... If black people, if we can get the courage to respect ourselves, in other words, like African Liberation Day. See, liberation can come in many forms. And I say what we need is the liberation of our minds and the transformation of our minds, beginning with the understanding of this great problem on the planet, which is a system of racism, white supremacy. Do you see that? By in, by black people learning how to respect themselves, because whatever you want to call the creative force in the universe that made us black and made the condition of crystal black, highest level black, that as long as we are in disrespect of that, we are in disrespect of the creative force. Absolutely. And then people want to beg and pray to the creator, help me with this, help me with that. And I would say the creator said, you're spitting in my eye. I made you black because black is the most critical thing on the planet. That's how come the astronomers are all talking about dark matter and the most powerful thing is the black hole. 
Mm. Racism, white supremacy has trained black people to hate themselves as black, to be glad that the slave masters raped our great-grandmothers, and so people don't look black and are trying to look white. And, And see, the system of racism pays the highest salaries to black people who... Un, without understanding, are calling black people niggers and mm-hmm. dogs and bitches and hoes and gangsters and thugs. See, that's the complete annihilation of black self-respect, and people think it's entertainment. Correct. No, that's the system of racism, white supremacy. You know, it's no different. That racism, white supremacy said, I will not give you jobs. I will not give you significant employment. I will not give you education. I will not give you housing, but I will give you guns. And I will give you drugs. Right. And so then you can destroy yourselves based on my motivation. Wow. So, you know, we are challenged. I say we are challenged as the parent people on the planet to begin to use our thought faculties and to be able to analyze and to be able to develop strategies and tactics to replace the system of racism, white supremacy, with justice. See, there's no time to hate white people. That's cheap. That's a waste of time. You know, you don't you don't win a basketball game or a football game hating your opponent. You win based on your understanding of the game and the knowledge of what plays are necessary playing against the particular opponent. And so, to me, this is the challenge, the continuing our continuing struggle for liberation and understanding at ever higher levels what liberation can mean. Right, right, definitely, definitely, definitely agree with that. And these are some of the things we want to celebrate uh, also this weekend with African Liberation Day as well in Detroit. Um, you, uh, we're gonna we're gonna go to the phone lines for a few few calls um, in a few minutes here. Uh, the call in number is area code nine one four three three eight thirteen seventy five nine one four three three eight thirteen seventy five. If you have a question or comment, press the number one key to put you in queue so we can bring you on the air. Uh, we're gonna transition into the TV show Scandal in just a few minutes here. Also, um, now your voice is dropping off, so I can't hear. Oh, can you hear me? Can you hear me? That's better. Okay, um, we're going to transition into the TV show Scandal in just a few minutes here. But I wanted to ask you, um, when you when you came here to Detroit April 20th last year, you were at the Shrine of the Black Madonna uh, Church, and you did your lecture. And I played a couple of clips of, uh, of the lecture um, leading up to you coming on uh, tonight, okay? And one of the things that you said was that any person who who refuses to talk about racism and white supremacy hates black people. And I found that very interesting. Uh, you alluded to it a, a few minutes ago when you talked about how if you're on TV and you bring it up, uh, you have an African-American person brings up race, people say you're playing the race card, things like this. But even when you have people who are well-meaning Europeans who say, I don't see color, I'm colorblind, things like this, and don't want to talk about racism. Can we talk about that? Because there's a push for the colorblind society and things like that. And from my understanding, basically what that means is is that you see something wrong with the person's color, but you don't really want to admit that there's something wrong with it, so you want to pretend like it doesn't exist. Can we talk about that for a minute? Well... Uh, See, I'm only saying that, in other words, racism, the dynamic structure of racism, white supremacy. Let me just read my definition. Go ahead. Racism, white supremacy is the local and global power system and dynamic structured and maintained by persons who classify themselves as white. 
whether consciously or subconsciously determined, which consists of patterns of perception, logic, symbol formation, thought, speech, action, and emotional response, as conducted simultaneously in all areas of people activity, economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war, for the ultimate purpose of white genetic survival and to prevent white genetic annihilation on planet Earth, a planet upon which the vast and overwhelming majority of people are classified as non-white, black, brown, red, and yellow by white-skinned people, and all of the non-white people are genetically dominant in terms of skin coloration compared to the genetic recessive white-skinned people. So the dynamic of racism has to destroy black people for the purpose of white genetic survival. And that's right. genocide. And I say that is what is happening to black people. In other words, the destruction and it's the tactic or the strategy is the destruction of black men. And mm-hmm. if you destroy the men of a people, you will have destroyed the people. And we are watching and seeing this, the incarceration of black men, black males dropping out of school. Fathers and husbands not in the home because men have to have employment to function as husbands and fathers. And so if there's high-level unemployment, then you are making necessary for people to try to find other means to bring in income or make money, and then you set up the law so that in their doing that, so-called illegal activity, they can go to jail you can remove them from the community. So we are on a genocide slide within the system of racism, white supremacy, a system for white genetic survival. So if indeed this dynamic is going on, and everything that black people complain about are the symptoms of this dynamic, and so if people are refusing to talk about it, then even though they think they like black people, even though black people think they like black people, but if you're refusing to talk about the thing that is killing black people, then we have to say that you hate black people, whether you understand it or not. Right, right. (laughs) You see, it's like, let's say as a physician, if I know that, uh, let's say, a certain food product, has poison in it, but I say I really want to protect my reputation and I want to be looked upon as being responsible, so I don't tell people. And so then people eat the food product and die. Can you say Francis Welsing loves the people or hates the people? Yeah, he hates the people. He doesn't love them. He fails to tell the people about something that will injure and destroy and kill them. Right. See, racism and white supremacy is the highest form of terrorism Mm. and injustice that has ever been conceived on the planet. Racism as white supremacy because it's a tiny number of people that is genetic recessive that has decided it has to survive by any means necessary, and that is by the destruction of people of color. Absolutely. Um, Okay. uh, Just a second here. If you uh, you have a question or comment, give us a call, 914-338-1375. Press number one key to put you in queue to bring bring you on the air. We've got Dr. Wilson for a few more minutes here. and, and, and I'm a, we're going to go to the phone lines quickly. Now, we're not going to have time for dissertations and manifestos tonight, okay? We know you love Dr. Wilson, but questions so we get expeditiously. And then uh, I want to get into uh, the TV show Scandal in, in, in a minute here, but we're going to try to get a couple couple calls here quickly. Um, let's see who's been on the longest. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll go, we're, we're going to the 313 area code, and then we'll go to the 215, it looks like here. 
Uh, we'll go to the 313-424 area code. Let's see. Hold on. Okay, call on the 313-424. Tell us your name where you're calling from. Call on the 313-424 area code. Are you there? Here's okay. Uh, okay, let's try the other one, the 313. Just a second here. All right, caller 313-588. Tell us your name, where you're calling from. Good evening, Mike. How are you tonight? Hey, how you doing, Frank? You all right? Very good, sir. Pleasure to speak with uh, Ms. Welsing. It's a absolute pleasure, ma'am. It's my pleasure. Um, unfortunately, I'll be out of town. I hate the fact that I won't be able to join you at the uh, uh, Charles, H. Wright, Charles H. Wright Museum on the 23rd. But so mm-hmm. glad Absolutely. that you're coming back to Detroit again. Thank you. Okay. I look forward my to question, being there. Yeah, my ahead, question Frank. to you tonight is, um, with, with with white supremacy and, and, and racism itself, are are they one and the same, or are they two different entities? The same thing. Racism is white supremacy, and white supremacy is racism. There's no other racism. In other words, let's say that if I stood on the street and called people who classify themselves as white every conceivable name, that... You know, that's just Frances Welsing just talking. She cannot control whether people who classify themselves as white have housing, have clothing, have shelter, have jobs, have hospitals, schools, etc. So that's just somebody talking. They don't have any power over the lives of people who classify themselves as white. And so this is what is essential. That's why I bothered to develop a definition of what racism and white supremacy is. It's the system structure for white genetic survival. It's the system Mm -hmm. structure for the power equation of white power over a relative non-white powerlessness. Okay. And if oh, people are that was, going that was... to successfully see, it's like if you are going to play chess, you have to first understand the game. If you're right. going to play checkers, you have to understand the game. And we have not understood the game. In other words, when we were in formal slavery, we thought if they would just take these chains off, if they would just end this system of slavery, that everything mm-hmm. is going to be all right. And we found out that Lincoln emancipated the enslaved African people, and then they structured laws. See, I say Reconstruction was the reconstruction of racism and white supremacy. The black people thought they were free. They thought they mm-hmm. were emancipated. But after mm-hmm. the chain came off, then laws were put in place so that black people could be controlled and demeaned. See, I tell people that at the point that Abraham Lincoln so-called emancipated the African people, that if everybody had been free, there was no color discrimination whatsoever. So everybody was mixing and blending. White people would disappear. Correct. I believe that. So if you ask white people, do you want to disappear, they want to tan, but they don't want to disappear. So that means that they have to, and this is why there's a whole long historical period where black men would be lynched and castrated for thinking about wanting to think about a white woman. Now they are using white women to control black men by saying, okay, now, white women, you can have your ideal mate tall, dark, and handsome. But you are contributing to his confusion about the problem of racism, white supremacy. But that's very important that 
you have now been unleashed to engage in the confusion of the black man. Mm -hmm. Am I making myself clear? And simultaneously building, developing a mixed, so-called mixed-race group of people where the mother is white. So the black man plus the white woman produce a child. The child is medium color, not white but medium color. The white female tells the child, you're not black. And so then the child, what, develops hatred of black. If it hadn't been for this black father, I could have been all white. But that becomes, that mindset can be a useful tool for the maintenance of the system of racism, white supremacy. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, Frank, thanks for calling in, okay? Thank you. Okay, brother. Take care. Hold on. All right. Um, let's try to squeeze another call quickly here. Um, call in the 252 area code. Tell us your name. Where are you calling from? Yes, my name is uh, Ronnie Anderson, and I'm calling from hey, Ronnie, North, how you doing? North Carolina. Okay, good. Yes, um, Dr. Wilson, I'm glad to uh, finally speak with you. As matter of fact, I was watching okay. your oh, video oh, just oh, oh, oh. Hold on, for a, hold on, Ronnie, just a second. Uh, okay. Repeat your name, Ronnie, where are you calling from, okay? And talk up a little bit. Yes, Ronnie Anderson from Greenville, North Carolina. Did you hear that, Dr. Walker? Yes, just, just tell him to speak as loud as possible. Okay, he said speak as loud as possible. <laughs> okay. Yes, I'm coming, calling, my name is Ronnie Anderson, and I'm calling from Greenville, North Carolina. Yes, sir. Yes. I was just looking at your video just last night about um, what you're speaking on today, and it was well appreciated. But I have a question, and my question is this, this pertaining to something that uh, me and a friend of mine was speaking about today. We was in debate about it. So you're going to have to repeat that, host, because oh. I can't hear him. I'll, 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 repeat, I'll repeat it for you, Dr. Okay. Wilson. I'll repeat it for you, Dr. Wilson. Go ahead, Ron. Okay. And my question, my question is, do Black people purposely um, support white, the white racist um, supremacy system, and uh, if so, why okay. do they? Okay, do black people purposely support the European white supremacy system, and if so, why do they? Is that your question, Ronnie? Yes, because See, I, I would say that the vast the majority of black people do mm -hmm. not understand the problem as I'm describing it. Yes. Do, do you see, in, in, in other words, this is new thought, starting with Neely Fuller, who was the first person to talk about racism, white supremacy as a total system structure. And so the vast majority of black people do not understand racism, white supremacy as a system. We can call it the miseducation of black people. Carter G. Woodson wrote about the miseducation of uh, black people. Mm -hmm. And so the system of racism, white supremacy, doesn't hardly wants us to use the word racism. And this is why Donald Sterling's revelations, in spite of himself, are so important. Because people don't want to talk about racism. It's like talk about anything, talk about homosexuality, talk about anything other than racism, white supremacy, which is the key. Right. And so right. the attempt is made to block an understanding of racism, white supremacy as a total system structure. In addition to that, black people have been taught to hate themselves. Like That's if right. I develop three pills, the first pill will turn you white the next day. The second pill will give you long, straight hair. The third pill would give you so-called white features. I would be the wealthiest person on the planet within a matter yeah. of seven days because all of the people of color on the planet have been taught to hate Right. This came out, as we said earlier, in the Donald Sterling dialogue about V. Sibiano. 
He said, she said she hated being black, that she wanted to be white. Look at all yes, the people right. walking around with long, straight hair that they buy. Look at the people who are bleaching their skin. And it's not only black people, it's people in Asia, people in India. Mm-hmm. Wherever there are people of color who have been psychologically damaged by racism, white supremacy. And so black people are supporting, not only that, the system gave black people the image of God as a white man. Thank you. I'm glad you bring that up. This was one of the cleverest things that the system did. And this was given to us when we were in chains. And said, here, the my image is God. And black people were being beaten and raped and mistreated for hundreds of years. And with the concept, oh, maybe there's a white person, God in heaven, who's going to come and save me. Well, this is a deep brain computer implant. Yes, it is. Jesus, Mm -hmm. if he was a historical figure in the part of the world, Middle East and Northern Africa, he could not have been white. Billy Graham even says Jesus could not have been white if he was a historic figure Mm -hmm. in that part of the world. But if you are going to hold people in oppression, first you deny them a deep level of education. So they're not reading and reading every book and searching for information and knowledge. And so you keep them in a state of non-learning. And then you tell them that the image of God, who they should be worshiping, who they should be looking to to solve their problem, is the same image of the oppressor. That's right. So this is what has been done to us. And the challenge is for us to respect ourselves at a sufficient level so we begin to think. See, this is why the system has black people playing a lot of loud music that is sensory overload so the brain can't function. Mm. Just boom de boom de boom You see, and that's supposed to be entertainment. Yep, but yep. it also cuts off effective thinking. So, oh. you know, again, by us, you know, by black people thinking and, and, first of all, beginning to deeply respect ourselves as black people, that this is key, nothing without self-respect. See, self-respect was what allowed for the Civil Rights Revolution when the black people were determined to oppose the laws of segregation and they went up against horses and dogs, police dogs, and fire hoses and gave their lives. Well, the system said, wait a minute, we can't allow this to continue. The people could not have made that step if they didn't respect themselves and were not willing to to give their lives. As Martin Luther King said, if you haven't found that thing for which you're willing to give your life, your life is not worth living, meaning your self-respect has not reached a sufficient level. And so from that point on, then the system said, no, we can transform. See, black people came out of that movement talking about black pride, black self-respect. Black dignity, black is beautiful, black power, and that had to be annihilated. And it was annihilated by telling black people they could be movie stars, but then they would be trashy images, using drugs, cursing at one another, shooting and killing one another, and then bring it up to, you know, musical entertainment and have all kind of trashy language, and black people calling themselves trashy names. See, you can't be a bitch and a whore and a dog and have self-respect. 
Right. It's exactly. impossible. You got one brain computer. And if the brain computer is dialed towards bitch, whore, gangster, thug, freak, that's a complete annihilation of self-respect. You can get the people to do anything. And all you have to do is turn on the TV and just look at some of the commercials that black people are in. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, thanks, brother, for your call. Thanks for your call. Thank you. All right. um, Okay, thanks, brother. Um, it, it, Dr. Wilson, we're, we're going to wrap up here in a few minutes, uh, 15 past the hour. I can hear you, sir. Uh, oh, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, if you speak up, it's almost like your voice drops away. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, I was looking at my notes here. <laughs> okay. Uh, 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 we're going to end this segment about 15 past the hour in about 11 okay. minutes here. Um, I wanted to transition and ask you about the TV show Scandal. I know you were on the, the Carl Nelson show on the radio talking about that uh, a few months ago. But the, the TV show Scandal on ABC, for those that don't know, uh, it has become a, a pop cultural phenomenon, okay? Um, it, a lot of people find out about it through social media, and at the center of it you have Olivia Pope, who is a quote-unquote powerful African-American woman. And now, originally she was involved in one relationship with a, a white male who, who's the president, President Fitz, fictional president. Now she's involved in two relationships with white, white men, President Fitz and I think his name is Jake. Okay, what, what do you make of of the popularity of Scandal and especially the support that it's getting from African-American women? I, 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 just, I just don't understand this. Uh, can you help me? Maybe I need to come see you for some, for some psychiatric help. <laughs> Again, if you understand the system, Mm -hmm. and it's just like I've been saying, to hold people in oppression, you have to destroy their self-respect. Yes, yes. You have to destroy their self-respect. Yes. And so basically, uh, scandal is... You know, in other words, for the hundreds of years we were in formal slavery. You had the slave master with his black concubines, plural concubines. Yes. This is Thomas Jefferson and Sally Hemings. But what has happened is that the system has gone so far in the destruction of black men so that 70% of the black households are single parent, unmarried, women don't have men. Do you see? And so women, it's the nature of women to want to have a man with power, a protector. And that is what is missing from the lives of black women in the system of racism and white supremacy because the man has been destroyed. And it's essential destroy, to destroy the black man because he is the threat to white genetic survival. And right. so what do we see being pushed? Black men, you want to be gay, you want to be homosexual. This is not to put down the person who says they're gay. This is not homosexual bashing because medicine doesn't even have the answers as to why we're seeing an epidemic in the effeminization of black men. But I say it also has to do with the removal of large numbers of men and incarcerating them. Not only if you incarcerate them for prolonged periods of time, large numbers begin to have sex with each other. Yes. That's understood. Do you, do you see? But all of it is a part of the symphony of the destruction of black people. Do you see? So the biggest thing in the news next to Sterling, Donald Sterling, and his revelations was what? A gigantic, tall black man football player yes. <laughs> embracing and kissing a white man. 
I was about to ask that question, yes. <laughs> do, you, do you see what I'm saying? In other words, pieces of the puzzle mm-hmm. of white genetic survival and the things that have to be done to the black collective, male and female. Do, do you see? So, I mean, it's got to be painful to our ancestors. Mm-hmm. If they're looking down, and seeing black women worshiping, being the concubine for a white man. Right, right. Willing. And glorifying in it. You see, but again, to the extent that racism, white supremacy is not understood. Somebody, I got a call from somebody because I was criticizing scandal. And they said, you're just jealous. God bless. Do you understand? I mean, but it really is. It's just the our absence of understanding. It's just like I looked at a black man. I'm driving, looking at a black man crossing the street, and he had his pants down, but almost below his buttocks. Mm-hmm. This is a grown black man, mm. where people yeah. don't even understand what that means. Mm. I say that comes from father hunger and really wanting to have male substance injected into the rectum, if not the mouth. Mm. Mm. Is that that dealing with prison culture at all? Because from my understanding, you know. Yes, all of it is tied. But in other words, see, it's, it's like if your body is deficient in vitamin A, Okay. It might occur to your brain, I need to go, I need to get some greens. I need mm-hmm. to go buy some greens. See, greens have vitamin A. Okay. So your brain will guide you. You you know, when you think, okay, let me go and get some greens, you're not thinking, I'm deficient in vitamin A. My body is telling my brain to go and get food substance that has vitamin A. So we have... The tragedy under white supremacy of black male masculine deficiency because fathers have been taken out of the home. Males grow up just looking at their mothers put on earrings, fix their hair, but father absence. And so male children, I've had male children say, you know, parent will bring the child to the psychiatrist and say he won't study or he won't do his homework and to have a little child 10 years old tell the doctor Dr. Welsing I think I could do my homework if I just had an official father wow wow do you see or another child say if I had a father Dr. Welsing he at least could explain to me what goes on under the hood of a car. Mm. See, that makes the, makes me as a psychiatrist want to fall on the floor and cry. Wow. You see, because the children are feeling the pain of the attack, and we are not yet in sufficient number understanding the attack, or we are wanting... You see, it's like scandal is a variation on the theme of black women going to church and wanting Jesus' white man to love them. <laughs> well, but, but to take it a step further, and we're about to wrap it up here, I'm going I'm to give people the details of African Liberation Day, how you could come see the system. Well, let me Detroit. just throw in so oh, the oh, women won't be hurt, go ahead. or the black men, for that matter, looking at porn. Uh, well, I don't, I don't get the connection. To say that again, what would you say about looking at porn? <laughs> what you say? In other words, I said black women going to church and wanting Jesus to love them, white male. Okay. Do you see, which is what scandal is all about, love me. Okay, white right. White male who has power. Right. <laughs> While a black man is thinking, 
you know, just listen to, look at all the basketball players and the football players and the rap star. I have to have a white woman. Okay, okay. <laughs> see, I you see what I'm saying? In other words, it's just what has happened to us, black men, black women, under the system of racism, white supremacy. Absolutely. And, you know, and to take it to take it one step further very quickly, even worse, that possibly even worse or just as worse, is African-American women comparing to Jesus, trying to see how he measures up to Jesus. I, I don't know if you've dealt with people like that. Wait a minute, say that again. I'm... I, said, I, said, I said the other thing, to take it a step further, is even worse or just as worse is African-American women yeah. comparing their husband, their boyfriend, or what have you, to Jesus to see if he, you know, because some women are taught to go find a man like Jesus, and they compare their boyfriend, husband, or what have you, to Jesus, okay? Mm-hmm. okay. And, and then they're disappointed when he doesn't measure up. Well, <laughs> I don't know if you've dealt with people like that before, but I've, I've, I've talked to women like that. Okay, okay. Yes, so that's that's something big. See, but well, if, it's like ahead. if we are able to lay all of this information out, mm-hmm. it's like drawing a circle, and the circle represents a system of racism and white supremacy. It's like the edge the, and the straight edge pieces of a puzzle. And so yes. then you begin to see where all of the pieces fit. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Well, Dr. Francis Cress Wilson is going to be in Detroit once again, Friday, May 23rd, at the Charles H. Wright Museum of African American History in celebration of African Liberation Day. So this is put on by the African Liberation Day Planning Committee in the Charles H. Wright Museum of African American History. Uh, it's, it's Friday, May 23rd, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m., Tickets are fifteen dollars, or you can get two tickets for twenty five dollars. Dr. Welsing is going to be dropping this type of information on us. I'm telling you right now, bring a pen and a pad with you to take notes. Okay, when you come see the sister, please bring a pen and a pad to take notes. For more information and to get tickets, call Brother Paul Taylor at three one three four seven seven one one four six. 313-477-1146, or Brother Greg McKenzie at 313-578-1300, 313-578-1300. And um, there are festivities on Saturday. Also, Saturday is free for you to attend at 10, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. at the same location, Charles H. Wright Museum. We have this flyer on our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. So check it out there. We hope to see you there. And, and sister, I, I just want to thank you once again for taking time out of your busy schedule to come on. We love talking to you, and you, you always have a wealth of information to help us navigate this system, understand what's going on. And, you know, I talk about at the African History Network how right knowledge corrects wrong behavior. So, you know, you are the epitome of that. Right knowledge corrects wrong behavior. Well, thank you, and uh, we're all going to keep our shoulder to the wheel and make certain that we replace racism, white supremacy with justice so there can be peace on the planet and the maximal development of all people. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, look, sister, you have a great night, and I will see you Friday, May 23rd in, in Detroit. Okay, sister? Very good. Thank you very much. Okay, hold up. Okay. All right, family, we'll be back in a few minutes. Just today, People Magazine named Oscar winner Lupita Nyong'o the most beautiful person of the year. Other African-American women, Beyonce, Halle Berry, have also graced the cover, but Nyong'o has said it was painful for her to be a young girl growing up with very dark skin. So we wanted to know if children today still absorb that painful message about dark and light skin. And ABC's Deborah Roberts had a personal reason to seek an answer. Today, Lupita Nyong'o was named People Magazine's Most Beautiful Woman of the Year. Quite a turn for the actress who recently shared a heartbreaking secret. My one prayer to God was that I would wake up lighter-skinned. Owning up to deep-rooted pain many black women have felt for years. 
But for women of color, especially... Reporting the story for Good Morning America, I too found myself shaken by old wounds. I personally understand Lapita's journey growing up. As Choking up on air, my personal revelation led to an outpouring of online messages. So many others sharing that dark shame. It led me to wonder, in 2014, with the prominence of women like Michelle Obama and Beyonce, surely color and beauty must no longer be an issue. So with the help of sociologist Deidre Royster and a group of five- to eight-year-olds in a New Jersey school, we took a new snapshot of the famous 1939 doll test. And black kids presented with two dolls overwhelmingly preferred the white one. We started by showing each girl three dolls, all dressed identically, but with different shades of skin color. Which one do you think is the most beautiful? This one. At first, we're encouraged to see this girl choose a doll who looks like her. Why is this doll more beautiful than these other two dolls? Since it looks mostly like me. Her confidence shining through. But then watch, we're stunned. Again and again, the girls choose the white doll. So this is the most beautiful doll. Why? Because she has blonde hair. Because she has blonde hair. After hair. Because she has blonde hair. What does that say to you about what messages they're getting outside in the world? Blonder, lighter, more European features are still seen as the most desirable. And TV may be partly to blame. One study looking at primetime television found 76% of the faces we see are white and just 16% are black, which might explain the girl's response when asked who they'd prefer to look like. I want to look like that. This black girl chooses the white doll and reveals the problem. But why do you guys think that this doll wasn't as popular? Because they don't like brown. For me, a sobering moment of truth as I watch with the parents, especially when we see what happens when the girls are asked which doll they'd like to take home. A tug of war over that blonde, white doll. Still have a lot of work to do. I spoke with researchers who specialize in body image and race, and they say it's going to take a lot more Lapita Nyongos with dark skin being held up as beautiful, Diane, to truly change the way we look at ourselves and look at each other. And you were saying, show pictures and talk about skin color. Don't avoid the issue. It's not enough to just buy them a range of dolls. You need to talk about the dark skin and how beautiful it is, along with all the other dolls. Talk about it. Specifically. A great report, and thank you, Deborah. All right, that was from April 23rd, ABC World News Tonight. They were doing a segment dealing with Lupita Nyong'o winning, uh, being named uh, Most Beautiful Person by People Magazine. You can go to abcnews.com, uh, abcnews.com, check out that article. That was from April 23rd. Uh, we posted it on our Facebook fan page, the African History Network. I posted it like last week. You can go back and, and, and look at that. I may post it again tomorrow. You can watch the, um, you actually watch that segment, and then along with the segment, they had the transcript of the segment, and it was a, a, a European American, a white sociologist, who was conducting the study, and th what she said was, what this study is telling us is that more European features, lighter skin, blonde hair, are still associated with being beautiful. Okay, these are still highly coveted in this society. All right, and and when you watch that video at the end, they show three girls who were basically it was a tug of war over the white doll with the blonde hair at the end. Okay, so you have to understand the type of the the effect that the images that our children see has on their psyche, has on their self-esteem. Dr. Leonard Jeffrey says whoever controls the, the images controls the self-esteem, the self-development, and the self-respect, the self-worth of the people. Whoever controls the history controls the images, okay? Naturally, Fly Detroit is, is having their uh, international uh, natural hair meetup day coming up this Saturday, May 17th at the beautiful Artist Village, okay? And to tell us about this, we have um, Etta Espy from Naturally Fly on the line once again. Hotel Etta, how you doing tonight? Welcome to the African History Network um, Show. 
Thank you for having me. What's up? What's up? <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. Well, you know, it's that time of the year again. This is the first natural hair meetup of the year, and yes, I do have natural hair. It's a fade, <laughs> but, but you know, we're looking forward to this. <laughs> we're looking forward to this. Now, for people who who may not be familiar with this, they may have heard bits and pieces of this before, but this may be their first time attending or something like that. You know, tell people, you know, why did you start? the Natural Hair Meetup, and and what's the purpose of it? Well, the Natural Hair Meetup is basically to just show unity in the community, for everybody to come together and for them to get information on people that really want to figure out how do I wear my hair natural. If I've been wearing a, you know, rocking a relaxer or rocking a press and curl or rocking a weave, and I really want to figure out how to embrace what God gave me naturally, that's why this event was was created, just to give people an outlet and to give sisters the time to just come together and to do some bonding and some sharing and some, and some you know, good moments. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, now, what can people uh, expect? Because I know you have, like, different um, uh, panels. You have, I think you have some workshops or something like that coming up for this one. So so give people an overview of what they can, uh, what they can expect this coming Saturday. Okay, sweet. So we have, uh, normally we have a product swap and accessory swap table. So people can come in and they can um, swap products with, with somebody else. If they have products they've used on their hair, they don't like it, they want to swap and try something else, or they just want to give some products away, we can do that as well. As well as gently use accessories. Mm. Uh, this year we're uh, donating to Alternative for Girls, so encouraging people to bring their uh uh, unopened hair products like shampoo, conditioner, twisting agents, things like that, so so that we can get those to to those girls in need. Also, we have a pop up beauty salon inside too, so you can get your hair done. You can watch some demos and tutorials. You can um, see people get their hair chopped for the first time when they cut the relaxer off or they'll cut the straight ends off their hair. Um, you can there's a question and answer booth, so people that have questions about natural hair can sit and uh, talk to. Uh, Deferentini of Texture Salon and our Marquisha St. Clair, the Curlers of a Specialist, to get those one-on-one questions answered. We also have the the regular Q&A that happens with a panel discussion with uh, a bunch of experts, Faye Master Colors from, from Faye Salon, Sheila Everett of Everett's Hair Braiding Studio. Uh, we have some YouTube specialists coming. We have our um, National Fight Detroit in-house specialists that also be on the staff asking uh, on the panel, asking questions. We have the Black Men's Panel that's back this year that's highly anticipated when black men mm. talk about their thoughts and feelings on women with natural hair. A lot of times it starts there and it goes off to black love and marriage and communication and all these other kind of topics, and that's being moderated by uh, Eddie Connor and Ebony Roberts, which I'm really excited about that. We have giveaways. Okay. We have uh, house music by Stacey D.G. Stacey Hot Wax, Legendary House DJ. We have vendors. We have food. We have stuff for the kids to do. It's just a really fresh, cultural, fashion-forward, sisterhood, family, brotherhood event, and I'm really excited about it again this year. Absolutely. Well, you know, you and Jan do a, a great job putting this on. And you know, you said it's fresh. You're taking me back. You take me back to my college days back in the nineties. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be smooth on the TLC tip. <laughs> <laughs> but now, how can how can people get tickets to this event? People can go on Eventbrite. It's a really long Eventbrite name, but I'll say it anyway. It's just Naturally Fly Detroit. I N H M D two thousand fourteen dot com or they can go to Sweet Potato Sensation on Lost and Grand River in Detroit and buy tickets or Textures by Nefertiti on Willis and Cass as well as Flow Boutique on Willis and Cass. And can get tickets through through those different outlets. Okay, and and also we put the flyer on our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, uh, so uh-huh. you can check it out. Right below the flyer, we have the link that takes you right to Eventbrite, so to your Eventbrite Please. page. So if you just click on that link, it takes you right to the, to their Eventbrite page, and you can purchase your tickets there. So go to AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. We have the flyer right on the home page. Just scroll down, and you'll see it. So. Um, 
you have the the the, the, the black male panel, and w- why is it important? Because the majority of the people at this event are African American women, okay? But why is, did you feel it's important to have the the, the black male panel or African American male panel? It's very important to have the panel because we have to start that that discussion a lot. You know, we started the the, the black men's panel because a lot of women, when they're returning to, you know, where their hair natural, and they feel like, well, is my husband going to like it? Is my man going to like it? Am I going to be able to get a man? I want to get married. You may think my hair is nasty or whatever. So we just started this whole dialogue, this mm-hmm. question of does he really like it and what does he like and open up that communication between the parties so that that can be shared. And what we're learning is that yes. a lot of the men that, that we've had on the panel and that we've talked to an interview during this process really prefer women that rock their own hair. It's very difficult to find yes. a man that says, oh, I'd rather have my lady wear a weave. It's really it's interesting. It's really interesting. They want to put their hands in that hair. They want to feel your hair. They want to know who you look mm-hmm. like after everything else comes off. So it's a beautiful thing just to start that, that, that dialogue and that conversation. And a lot of times we're on the same page, even though we're saying things differently. Absolutely, you know, and that, that's extremely important because we have to have these conversations where we can redefine beauty for ourselves from from an African cultural and historical perspective because we, we have to come to the realization that we've both been lied to, African-American men and African-American women. We've both been oh, lied no. to. We, we 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 watch the same TV shows. We we have both been infected with European white supremacy and racism. So African American women have been, been taught to worship white men. African American men have been taught to worship white women. We just have to come to that realization, and then we have to reclaim our, our history and culture to help protect us from that and redefine standards of beauty based upon our history and culture. Okay, so when, when, when African-American men can talk about how they like natural hair and things like this, this gives a signal to African-American women that, okay, it's okay for me to be natural. I, I'm still going to be attractive to you. I don't have to look like, you know, um, um, what we see on TV. I don't have to look like uh, Marilyn Monroe or uh, 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 Florence Henderson on the Brady Bunch because all of us have seen the Brady Bunch, right? And we know the Brady Bunch is the story of a lovely lady. She was bringing up three very lovely girls. All of them had hair of gold like their mother, the youngest one in curls. Okay, this is embedding in our mind at a very young age to worship European features and European hairstyles and blonde hair. Okay, so we have to have these type of conversations here so we can move forward. So, you know, this is extremely, extremely important. Um, If you're just tuning in, we're speaking... We're, just, we're speaking with Etta SB of uh, International of the International uh, Natural Hair Meetup Day, Naturally Fly, coming up this Saturday. Um, what has been some of the responses from, say, women who don't wear their hair naturally right now when they come to your event, but they're open to it, they want to learn more? What have been some of the responses of some of these women? People are really, women are, I mean, I, we're, we're, we're getting so much of a warm welcome. Um, people that are coming to the event are excited that we even thought of this, excited that, that we're putting this on, and just happy to be in the building with other people that are positive. It's never any drama. It's just It just feels good. And I'm excited that mm. people are owning the event like it's their own. I mean, people are changing profile pictures on Facebook. They're sharing the event. They're passing them <laughs> on Facebook. I mean, men, a lot more men are coming these days, too. Men are like, I want to learn. I want to be around these, these other cultural and positive sisters. You know, it's it's, so it's, right. like a, it's just like a family. Like, everybody owns it like it's their own, and they really want to be a part of it. And because we haven't had one in a minute, people are, like, really excited about it. So it's really, it's Absolutely. almost like very hard just to think, like, all we wanted to do with my sister and I was gather people together to talk about hair because it's very important to us, and, and women's empowerment is very important to us. So women know they're beautiful just the way they are right now. You don't have to do anything to yourself. 
more than what you want to do to to be accepted and to be loved and to be able to exist in this world. And so for people to see value in what we do and they want to just come and be a part of the process, they just want to come and be in the building just to lend their good energy so they can be seen, so they can encourage somebody else is really, really important. So we've got a lot of positive feedback, a lot of the salons, and the elders in the community are always rallying behind us to, to help us in whatever mm. we need to do. We really, really, really appreciate that. Absolutely. Um, so we, we know this is coming up this Saturday, and we're all looking forward to this. Um, sometimes one of the drawbacks from a woman who really wants to go natural is that I work in corporate America, I have a professional-type job, am I right. still going to look professional, or I may be seeking employment uh, will they hire me with natural hair? Are, are you going to have workshops or information that addresses those issues and concerns? Oh, definitely. That, that's something that's going to come up in the general question and answer. And I will make, since that you said that, it reminded me again, I'll make a point to write that down uh, just to make sure that, mm-hmm. that we address that. For me, because I push the envelope naturally, I just do what I want to do. And I feel like when your personality and your skill set um, supersedes what 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 your hairstyle is because I see our white counterparts coming to work with uh, you know wet ratted ponytails and they get a job I don't understand we have to go through all these flips and dips and and dive to get a job with I really don't get that I there's something that's very passionate I don't think it's oh, out the shower with wet hair and go to work and that's okay but we got to go get it fried dyed and laid to the side just to be accepted I don't get that I really really don't. And so I think mm-hmm. most of the issue is internally and it's with us that we have to know that we are okay just the way we are. But we have been so ingrained that you have to do certain things to your hair just to be accepted. I don't believe that. And I think if we start inside and truly and say, you know what, I can do this to my hair and this is okay, then that energy will exude and will, it will bleed off of you and then you will give that to your coworkers and they'll accept that. Most of the problems we have a hard time accepting that. Nobody else really has a problem with it. It's just us. Mm. Wow, wow, definitely. Once again, it's coming up this Saturday, May 17th, at the beautiful Artist Village, located at 17340 Lasser Road. Some people say Lasher. It's actually Lasser, L A H S E R. Okay, <laughs> 17340 Lasser Road, Detroit, Michigan. Tell people how they can get tickets again. They can get tickets at Naturally Fly Detroit INHMB 2014.eventbrite.com. I know it's super long. Or they can go to Sweet Potato Sensations on Lawson and Grand River right across from the beautiful Artist Village, Detroit. Or Textures mm-hmm. by Nefertiti or Flow Boutique, and those are both on Willis and Cass downtown. You can also, if you don't get those places, you can also get a ticket at the door and just come right on in. Absolutely. And then once again, we have the um, flyer on our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, with the link right below it. So you can go check it out. We're going to put it again on our Facebook fan page. I'll have that up in a few minutes on our Facebook fan page once again. Okay, well, uh, there'll be vendors there. Now, um, uh, is there still any vendor space available, uh, or are you pulling with vendors? Oh, wow. I think we're about full. I have so many people still calling trying to be vendors, and I'm trying to accommodate oh, okay. everybody. But, yeah, okay. I think we're just about – I think we're good. <laughs> Nobody okay. else calling about right. me. <laughs> okay, well, African History Network will be there. Uh, we'll, we'll have a vendor table, so definitely come by. Check that out. We're going to have a lot of powerful information for you, a lot of DVDs and CDs dealing with our history and culture, a lot of my lectures. And then the black uh, male panel, uh, I think I may be on the panel. Is that correct, on the uh, I black think male so. panel? I I I think you might be on the panel. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Yep, Good, yep. so come check that out because I'm going to have some powerful information for you also, the black male panel. You know, I, I, I've i done a multi-part lecture series dealing with the media's deliberate destruction of the African-American family and how negative images about us have been put out going back to the mid-1800s and how we internalize those images, things like this. So hair is an extension oftentimes, of how you see yourself, how you perceive yourself, 
okay, based upon what you've seen, heard, and read, based upon what has been taught to you. So this is extremely important. So once again, you know, a great job to you, uh, 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 you, uh, SB, and, and your sister Jan, and uh, we all look forward to seeing you coming up uh, this Saturday at the Artist Village. Okay, sister? That's right. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate you, too, for everything. Thank you very much. Okay, no problem. We'll see you Saturday. Hotep, sister, have a good night, okay? Peace, Hotep, to you. Peace. Peace. All right, family, we're going to be back uh, in just a minute uh, with um, – our own cultural scientist and archaeologist, Sister Nubia Warford. She's doing a fantastic uh, lecture coming up this Saturday also at 3 p.m. So when you finish uh, at, at Sister Nubia's lecture, come on over to the Artist Village because uh, the Artist Village is going on to 8 p.m. Come on over to the Artist Village. But she's going to be at Nandy's Knowledge Cafe, okay? Um, so we've got Sister Nubia on the line. Hotel uh, Nubia, Nubia, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing fine. How are you? Oh, I'm all right. Just <laughs> very busy. You've been all since eight o'clock. Very, so. <laughs> very busy. I know you're busy, and I'm I'm planning on coming to the artist village too because I want to go to that too. I'm supposed to meet a couple of friends and cousins and stuff there, so it's going to be fun. Absolutely. Well, you know, I, I've seen your, your presentation in, in the past. We've done a couple of presentations together. I know you did your presentation mm-hmm. in the past in search of the creators, and uh, you have this one coming up this Saturday uh, at the Nandy's Knowledge Cafe, located at 12511 Woodward Avenue in Highland Park, Michigan. But tell us about yeah. the creators in our own image. What's What's significant about this presentation? <clears throat> the significance is is um you know when when um the, during the time of black supremacy when what is really only supremacy because we existed pretty much in isolation and we were the um you know most advanced civilization in the world it we worshiped um the image of the creator in our own image, which was a black image um it was a black mm-hmm. woman, and the society is so important because the society understood at that time um, that, you know, when you put your black woman on top of the world, that you know, that, that she is the one who um, is going to keep everything in line as far as the family and the culture, because that's what she does anyway. So it's really, right. really important for people to understand that things were changed around in time. And now that, that challenges a lot of people's belief system. Um, they're, they're welcome mm-hmm. to believe anything they want to believe, but I'm going um, with archaeological evidence, historical evidence, as well as prehistoric evidence that points to the same um, conclusion that, you know, that our things have been juxtaposed um, as everything has been juxtaposed as, as we came in contact with the Western world. Absolutely. Well, you know, on the flyer, it looks like you have the uh, the the, the nectar meat on the flyer. Is that, is that who is on the um, is. current flyer for your lecture? Neat. Okay. So most of us, even if you don't study African history or you don't study uh, Kemetic, uh, Kemetic history or ancient Egyptian history, most of us have heard of ISIS. Okay, mm-hmm. correctly known as offset, but even I tell you know when I do some of my lectures, I tell people how you know when I was a kid and growing up in the seventies, I would get up Saturday morning and watch cartoons, and one of my favorite children's shows was the Shazam <laughs> and Isis Hour, and mm-hmm. they showed us this white woman named Isis who got her powers mm-hmm. from ancient Egypt doing all these great things, but they never told us this was a copy of an African woman, so. How what's the significant a uh, neat and mm-hmm. uh, w- when and what was the importance also of offset or ISIS since you know ISIS is like somebody we really are more familiar with. But what's the significance of neat since you have her here on the flyer? Well, neat is actually the 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 oldest, most ancient image of the creator, mm-hmm. of the creatress, mm-hmm. the creator, or like people like to say the god, but you know they didn't really think of things like as the one God, but she was the images of the Most High. Um, after that, much after that, thousands of years after that, um, Isis came into play. And Isis, um, d- despite popular belief, was uh, was, set, was, a, was a queen in one of the regions um, near in, in, the, in the Kemetic Empire. And um, yeah. because her, 
her existence was so divine, she was elevated to uh, to to a deity at the time of her yes. death, so she would live on forevermore. And um, so she was thousands of years after, as well as Osir, um, who that story goes after. The the original story, I mean, even Anit, there were uh, there were um, images before her, which is Wajet. And Wajet, what they call sometimes in other cultures, the two sisters that are the two snakes, that are the earth mothers that actually uh, represent are on the um, are on the healing rod. And uh, you know, comedic culture is in any culture that is really built on tradition. You can actually tell exactly what came before by the iconic um, the icons. I could I, if I can say it, iconography, and. Um, <laughs> It, it gives you these images, and so you can tell what came before. So, um, but meat is the is the is the first human image um, that was worshipped in the form of the Creator. Okay. Now, how far back does the worship of meat go? And that's spelled N E I T H, correct? Meat. N E I T H. Yes. How far it's back does like the worship meat of meat without- go? The yeah. worship of meat, we trace, can go back, it goes back as far as 5,000 years, about 5,000 years. And before that, it was Wajet. Um, Wajet goes back. We see her, their images, the two sisters, as far back as 30,000 years. I mean, their images are on the, um, are on, are on cave, are rock drawings, and we won't say cave drawings. Because in, in, in Africa, not very few people lived in caves. They were going to caves for shelter. But, um, the, you know, on the rock drawings, we see Wajet uh, quite frequently. Okay. And you said there are carvings of the deity or the netter, uh Wajet, mm-hmm. that goes back about 30,000 years ago? About 30,000 years ago. Uh-huh. The deities, um, the two sisters, the two snake images, um, and then um, neat comes into play um, about 5,000 years ago. I safely say 5,000 years ago, writing system came into existence between six and 8,000 years ago. So, but she came shortly after. You know, shortly okay. After. Mm-hmm. Now, um, now, now, newbie, now, uh, Wajet was uh, worshipped in Ancient Kemet, Kemet, is that correct? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. Now, Taseti or Tanehesi, which the Greeks mm-hmm. call Nubia, that mm-hmm. is the mother Kush. to ancient Kemet. Or it is. They, they may call it Kush, but also mm-hmm. from my understanding for Professor Manu at Pem, Kush was more of a region as opposed to a particular, what we understand today is country. It, uh, it, dep- it depends. It depends because, uh, you know, and he and I okay. differ on this because people, uh, you know, people will say things like Kush and Nubia, and they mean generally what they're talking about is, is black Africa in that time period. It's like we call okay. black people black people in that time period. If you ran into somebody, they may call somebody, they may misrepresent um, um, somebody as a Kushite, they may represent somebody as a as an Ethiopian that meant a Kushite, a Kushite that may have been a person from Kemet, they use these ter- ter- terms interchangeably because they rec- mm-hmm. they were used to recognize black people. Okay. So we have uh, uh, Ta City or Ta Nehesi or Nubia mm-hmm. uh, yes. basically talking about the same area. Uh, this is mm-hmm. the, 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 the mother to ancient Kemet. And then uh, Abyssinia uh, or Ethiopia, is the mm-hmm. grandmother to ancient Kemet. Mm-hmm. So, so if you, so, because you have a uh, worship of uh, uh, the Ujet, or what was it? What was the name again? Uh, Wajet. Wajet. Wajet or Ujet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah thirty thousand years ago. Mm-hmm. Because we have that going back thirty thousand years ago. Then, how old is? Um, hmm. I don't know if I should use the word civilization, but how Uh, old is civilization in Abyssinia then if that's the grandmother? Well, if that's the grandmother, then it has to go back probably further than 30,000 years. Uh, We know because of of, um, of Tia 
in the calendrical uh, rock formation that actually points to stars, and then we know that they were using it to direct the time systems and, uh, you know, and chart the stars and the calendrical year and stuff at that time. goes back 12,000 years. We know um, that that civilization, as as explained by to, to me by Dr. Jeffries, and we know yeah. um, from Dr. Um, the whole Dr. Leonard Jeffries, uh, we know mm-hmm. from evidence that we did, we, me, he and I just had this discussion, going back to southern uh, Africa, the same civilization, and the Kushite Kemetic civilization went all the way to the tip of Africa. And we, when we talk about ancient Kush, when we talk about ancient Emmet, Kemet Empire, we need to expand what we think um, were their borders mm-hmm. because those their borders went all the way to the southern tip, went all the way up through Europe, went all the way west across Africa, um, probably touched on, on Central and South America, and probably and went the other way across uh, what we would call in the old days Asia Minor, which has been bastardized into the Middle East these days, and goes all the way yes. into China, goes all the way into India. So these, this civilization was huge. And so it's, it, it goes, as, 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 as Chancellor Williams says, it goes beyond what we will know, at, 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 which modern history, because modern history has no, um, has no uh, bearing on, on how old and ancient this continent is. But the African continent is the only continent that was not submerged by water. So people, it's possible that people have been living there for millions and millions, not people like people. I mean, human, um, homo sapiens, sapien people. So you said it's possible that homo sapiens, sapiens uh, could have been living in the continent they called years. Africa. Yeah, 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 exactly. Because, um, you know, when I, when I read works from Renoko Rashidi and talk to Renoko, mm-hmm. uh, also Dr. Charles Finch has talked about this, and these are just two of, of the many uh, of our scholars who talked about this, but they, but they talk about how uh, Homo sapiens sapiens go back at least 300,000 years uh, ago as opposed to 75,000 to 100,000 years ago, like... Mm-hmm. Um, a, a European anthropologist push. Okay, mm-hmm. so um, and, and if you read um, Dr. David M. Motep's book, The First Americans Were African, documented evidence. He has overwhelming evidence in there. You know, dealing with at least 130,000 years of our history that's been mm-hmm. stolen. And you, you see mm-hmm. the article from New York Times uh, in February 2010 on Crete. Uh, it's called On Crete. Uh, evidence of ancient mm-hmm. mariners, C R E T, and they deal with an mm-hmm. African presence going back at least 130,000 years ago, things like this. So, uh, mm-hmm. you know, this is this is just fascinating, and I want people to know that that Nubia is an actual archaeologist. I don't mean she goes in her backyard and digs up the bones. <laughs> I used to no. do that too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, tell, but tell people tell people a, a briefly a, a, about your actual archaeological digs in the mm-hmm. Sudan. Um, I've, I've been on uh, three archaeological digs in the, in the Sudan and started doing some research. And what we were doing is we were, we were documenting um, some people in um, the Tana Desert uh, right outside of a, a little village called Abu Eritella, which is um, just in, out in, it, it is in the Isle of Meroe, which is considered the Isle of Meroe. And, uh, we were actually, they, they claim that there's a sun temple there. Um, as far okay. as I'm concerned, it, it's, it's probably a government building from about 2000 to 2100, about, about from 2000 uh, years ago, probably about 5 AD, um, about the okay. time when Christianity was coming through um, the area. And, um, you know, we're finding burials there, but it's oriented towards the sun, and we know that the people were also um, still worshiping the traditional, the, traditional, uh, the traditional religions as well as it was becoming mixed with um, Orthodox Ethiopian Christianity. Um, it hadn't been um, turned into what we know as Christianity today. It, it was still Orthodox Ethiopian. It was during the time... Of when um, the king of um, Ethiopia was uh, was destroying all 
um, previous traditional um, practices. And so the, a lot of these uh, buildings were toppled that had Wajet and Rujet on there um, from ancient Kush and had the, uh, you know, um, actually worshiping the kings as uh, kings or the regents as um, as gods and goddesses, and so that they were destroying that at that time. So that's what we were finding there. But the three hundred, getting okay. back to that three hundred fifty thousand years of evidence, that is outside of um, um, Botswana, which we find these structures that are exactly built like the same structures that you find um, for the um, foundation of buildings uh, in in ancient Meroe. So we know that, that that building tradition from ancient Kim and ancient ancient Meroe and ancient came from ancient Meroe that's in ancient Kemet as well as um there and those those structures are over three hundred and fifty thousand years old. So that is fact that we know that civilization in Africa existed three hundred and fifty thousand years ago. So it's still there. Wow. You know? Wow. Mm-hmm. Um now what type of dating system, or what, what what type of dating verification system are you using uh, to determine that it's three hundred fifty thousand years old? Oh well, you can still use the carbon dating system, but potassium argon also. I mean, it goes it, potassium argon goes and um, uses higher increments, whereas a carbon okay. is really based on. Um, you know, the, the, how the carbon is stripped away over the years. And it actually documents that because of the um, of, of the pattern that it leaves, the, radi- the radi- radiocarbon pattern that it leaves on the rocks. And so that's kind of x-rayed, and then that's how they find out um, how old things are. And these, these are the only reason that those structures are still exist is because they use the natural rocks to um, mm-hmm. to put that together without um, with same um, same practice without use of mortar in between the rocks and they can tell because of that have they used man made materials man made materials don't last three hundred and fifty thousand years um, so but but <laughs> they can you know you know but have they not used those rocks to build that structure um, we wouldn't been able to to to, to tell about that so. It's amazing that that exists, and I'll um, I'll make sure that I include a picture of that structure um, in my lecture tomorrow, so that um, you know, so that I can show people the evidence of the antiquity of our um, of our of our ancestors, of our civilizations, the knowledge, the architectural knowledge, because that points to organize um, right. organize um, cities, towns. 350,000 years ago to some people that's unfathomable but you know that, you know you know but it it exists and you know anthropology archaeology was created to prove how uh, infantile the whole rest of the world was compared to western civilization and it's actually proved the opposite of how infantile western civilization is compared to the rest of the world so you know, mm-hmm. it's 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 uh, this is a really important find found by two Southern African uh, non-black um, people archaeologists, and um, and they're verifying this as well, as well as the okay. the, the, um, the in the su- south they're finding a calend- a rock calendrical um, structure that's seventy five thousand years as well. So you know, there's okay. a lot of now, things the going on. The, the three hundred fifty thousand year find. What, what was the name of that find? Because I want to look that up. What was the name of that? It is. It is outside of Botswana. Uh, it's okay. outside of Botswana, and um, the name of that find. They're not really giving it a name, but it's outside of Botswana. I'm thumbing through trying to look it up right now, so I can okay. give you a little bit of information. Okay. Well, um, hopefully, we'll I can give you by the end of the show. If if and I don't find it while I'm on the phone, I'll I'll text it to you, okay? Okay. Well, uh, Nubia is doing her lecture coming up this Saturday, 3 p.m., May 17th, Mandy's Knowledge Cafe, located at 12511 mm-hmm. Woodward Avenue, Highland Park, Michigan, and that's four blocks south of the Davidson Freeway between Glendale and Highland Street. Uh, admission is only $7. More information.
For more information, call 313-865-1288, 313-865-1288. The creatures in our own image when God was an African woman, an archaeological perspective. So uh, we're out of time for this, uh, Nubia, but just uh, Mm -hmm. inbox me on Facebook or email me uh, the name of that line. I want to check that out also. Okay, sister? Please do. All right. Thank you so much. Hope to see everybody tomorrow. Bye-bye. Okay, well, Saturday, Saturday, not tomorrow, Saturday. Okay, have a good night. Okay, Okay, peace. Yep. Okay, family, that's going to do it for us tonight. want to thank everybody for tuning in. Thank all of our guests. Also thank uh, uh, Dr. Francis Cress Wilson. You've been listening to the African History Network show. I'm your host, Brother Michael M. Hotel. Be sure to visit our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. We still have a crowdfunding campaign going on. If you learned something tonight, if you like the information, we're here every Thursday, 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and you can donate to our crowdfunding campaign because we're moving. uh, We're going to do another show also on the Empowerment Radio Network. Network, and that network has about 400,000 listeners. It's going to be a very powerful show. It's going to start up probably in about three weeks. Just talked to Dave Anderson a couple of days ago. Uh, we purchased our first piece of equipment. It was very expensive, $1,350, and I still have to buy the $800 mixer n- next week, okay? Uh, visit our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, for our crowdfunding campaign. Remember, at the African History Network, we focus on educating, empowering, and inspiring people of African descent throughout the diaspora and around the world. Right now, let's correct your own behavior in my hotel. Also, if you if you um, want to uh, contact me, email me at info, I-N-F-O, info at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. If you want to bring me in for a lecture, a workshop, something like that. Uh, also deal with entrepreneurship as well because I've taught entrepreneurship for seven years. Email me, info at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. We'll talk to you next time. Remember, right now is correct your own behavior. Mod Hotel.